back to Wake Up America. Today we have with us the man that many people call the king of Texas barbecue. That's right, Roland Dickey is the owner of one of the largest nationally owned barbecue companies. Welcome, Roland. Hillary, it's great to be here. We've got some ribs today that we're going to cook for you that we think are going to be a little bit different. We're going to let you cook these ribs inside instead of outside. You know, everybody's got a barbecue grill at home, or a, uh, and all of our restaurants have one, of course, as well. But people that don't have one have only to rely on their oven. And then people like myself, even who live in a high rise. You live in a high rise? Yes, Hillary. You know, <laughs> after 30 years, of my wife got tired of doing all the yard work, and she moved us to a high rise. So I don't get to live in a house anymore that has 10 dogs living under it like I always uh, used to live in. So today, we're just going to cook these ribs and do a great job on them just in your oven. What we're going to do is take a, a side of ribs you can get at any grocery store. Then we're going to cover them up with, on each side, a generous little sprinkle here of some rub. And this is just any red pepper based rub you can use. Now, I'm using the Dickies rub, but if you can't get that, any red pepper and paprika based rub that gives them a good color as well as a good taste. We're going to put it on both sides. Now, is there a certain measurement we should use or just until they're well covered? Just well covered. Generously cover them on each side and then rub it in. Remember, barbecue is made to be eaten nasty and cooked kind of nasty <laughs> and messy in the same way. Now, after we've done that, I'm going to take a roaster like this. We're going to put these ribs in the roaster. We're gonna, remember, we're going to cook these ribs in the oven, so we're going to use this roaster for that. Now, after we put them in there, we're going to add a couple of very simple ingredients. Here is two cups of Dickey's barbecue sauce. Now, you could use any tomato-based barbecue sauce. We're going to add those both to this roaster. Just generously pour it over the ribs, just like I just did. Then, we're going to take a bottle of beer. Now, I'm using Lone Star here today. No real magic to Lone Star beer, certainly not much magic at all, but it's a Texas-based beer. We use it a lot for our cooking down here in Texas. And I'm going to take that, we're going to open this beer up. Of course, there's never any, any particular time when not to have a beer. <laughs> yeah, I always put this whole bottle of beer around the ribs, except I always save about a swallow or two for myself Did to you try it out. for me? Well, after we get off work, <laughs> I've noticed I've saved a few of these good beers for us, Hillary. Great. In fact, let me just tell you. Whenever I start a recipe, I always pour four or five ounces of good wine inside the cook. That's my first step. You can understand that. Well, if what we do, we put the, the whole bottle of beer like we just did around the ribs and the sauce. We're going to cover them up now, put them in the oven for three, at 300 degrees for two hours covered. That's our first step. Great. Uh, Roland, I actually think we have a phone call on the line from Joanne in uh, Hardneck, Texas. Joanne, are you there? Yeah. I just cooked a whole bunch of ribs, and it turned out to be a mess. Oh, no. My boy, Donnie Lloyd, just got out of TDC. What, what TDC? Texas Department of Corrections. Oh. He'd been waiting years for these ribs, and he was mad. I thought he was going to kill his mama. Well, we don't want that. He'd we have gone we, right back to the pen. We don't want that. I, I've got this recipe. If you'll try them out for him, Joanne, I believe this will keep Donnie Lloyd at least free on bond uh, for, for the duration. Thank God. We'll be right back when we get to try some of the Dickies' delicious ribs. Mama, what you doing? Little Roland, you know what's Dickies make the best barbecue in town. Sure do. Well, now we're going to open our own barbecue place where everybody can have some of our great barbecue. We are? And we've come a long way, Mama. I'm Roland Dickey, and we're still fixing our barbecue the same way you taught us. We've got the best brisket, the best ribs, the best sausage anywhere. In fact, we've got eight meats and 16 vegetables. Come see us at Dickey's. We're still family owned and proud of it. Dickey's Barbecue. I'm going to get these out of the oven now, Hillary. We put these in before the show started at 300 degrees for two hours, and we've got some that are almost ready. Well, they smell so great. I hope they taste as good as they smell. Trust me, they will. They'll even do better. Let me put these ribs down here right in, beside me where these folks can see them. There's one more step to this recipe, Hillary. What we're going to do is now, this is the secret step that nobody knows how to do at home. We're going to take them out. Now, these ribs are really ready to eat right now. We're going to take them out, and we're going to cut them up, single these ribs up. Look how tender they are. Oh, see how wow. the knife just falls through there like that? Looks great. All you got to do with these ribs now, Hillary, is hold them above your mouth and shake them, and the meat will fall right down your throat. <laughs> No, no, no chewing allowed. We're going to baste these ribs real good with barbecue sauce. This is the, this is the secret formula step we're going to do. I baste them with, with barbecue sauce on, on both like sides. Okay. But cut them up. Now, we're going to put these ribs back. I would do all these ribs, not just these three, obviously. We put them back in this pan, uncovered. We're going to put, take our oven and heat it up a little bit higher to 350. Put them in for 15 or 20 minutes, uncovered. This is the secret. This makes these ribs crisp up. They're just like the ones that would have come off your barbecue grill if you had a barbecue grill because you weren't living in a high-rise like me or something like that. That's right. That's how this recipe ends. Great. Well, now that I have you here, since you are a barbecue expert, 
I've always had the question, what are Rocky Mountain oysters? You mean uh, calf fries? Yeah. Well, uh, Hillary, this is a question that might best be answered by your mother. <laughs> well, that clears that up. Well, thanks for joining us today, Roland, and join us next time on Wake Up America. <laughs>